Hello people, my name is Edith. I had a lot of hopes and dreams about my marriage to Geoffrey. We met through a work event and instantly hit it off. We dated for three years before deciding to tie the knot. Geoffrey was a very kind and caring boyfriend. He used to pamper me with gifts and dates even when I didn't want them. I grew up in a poor family and didn't have much growing up. My parents were long deceased and I didn't have any relationship with my extended family, so when I found Geoffrey, I truly thought that I finally got my soulmate. While my relationship was almost perfect, there was one problem. Geoffrey's mother Vivian didn't like me at all. She was a rich woman who made a lot of money through smart investments. Naturally, Geoffrey grew up and had a comfortable life, so when she heard that he was dating a nobody like me, Vivian had a hard time accepting me, she said. I get it that you two love each other, but I think you have to think things through. Geoffrey is used to having a comfortable life. While he does have a decent job, you don't have a substantial income, Edith. I'm afraid you'll end up taking advantage of him. Vivian, I get it that my family was not very well off, but I'm doing pretty okay for myself. I really do love Geoffrey and want to be with him. Geoffrey does seem to be in love with you too. However, I've seen how he spoils you. How can I be sure you are not using him for money? Mom, you're being too critical of her. I like spoiling Edith. She's a great girl who listens to me and considers my feelings. We really do make a good match. Vivian was never convinced by our logic. At the back of her mind, she had doubts about our relationship. I must admit that her suspicions made me very hostile towards her. I mean, who would like to be called somewhat of a gold digger by their in-laws? So Vivian and I had a strained relationship all along. Back then, I thought that my marriage to Geoffrey would bring me mother-in-law problems. Vivian was pretty powerful and headstrong, so I had doubts that we would get along. However, she never went beyond expressing her doubts about me. I did admire her, but kept my distance. I knew that I had Geoffrey's support, and that made me feel secure. Well, that's what I thought when I married Geoffrey. The sweet and caring guy was the one I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. But life had other plans. We did get married. But Geoffrey turned out to be someone else completely. The problems started pretty early in the marriage. After the first year was up, Geoffrey stopped being affectionate or caring towards me. He no longer smalled me with gifts, but I didn't mind. I was with him for love and love only. But things got worse pretty fast. I had no idea just how greedy and selfish my husband was. In fact, he never showed me the side of his before our marriage. He quickly became a freeloader and expected me to cater to all his demands. It started with small things, him asking for some cash here and there, or asking to buy him stuff. However, it soon escalated into me paying for everything. Every month, he had an excuse for why he couldn't contribute to the household expenses. I never complained, because I thought it was a temporary situation. However, I was shocked when Geoffrey suddenly quit his job because of management problems. He never consulted me. He simply informed me once it was done. When I asked him about getting a new job, he said, I don't want to go to work, Edith. All this toxic work culture is getting to me. I don't think I'm made to work in this system. It's better if I stay at home. But we need an extra income, Geoffrey. You can't just make such big financial decisions alone. You could have talked to me before deciding. Or is there anything to talk about? Do you want me to stay at work and damage my mental health? No, Geoffrey. I don't want you to risk your mental health. I just wish you had consulted me before deciding. We are a team and these decisions need to be discussed. Geoffrey ignored my feelings and never apologised. I have no idea what he expected me to do. I mean, I don't have a problem with my husband staying at home. But Geoffrey never did anything for the house either. I did all the cooking and cleaning along with working 40 hours a week. Sometimes I took overtime shifts to make ends meet. Geoffrey simply stayed at home and played video games. When I asked him to help around the house, he said, I don't feel like doing chores. You know, I've been depressed for a while. I simply don't have the energy to do chores. Geoffrey, I need help around the house. I'm working hard and can't keep up with all the chores. You don't have to do everything. Can you at least help? But I'm not good at these things. These are women's jobs. You can't expect me to do them. If I fail at these chores, I will feel even worse about myself. Jeffrey, if you're having serious mental health problems, you should start therapy. I'll take up a side job to help you. It won't be a problem. I want you to get better. Therapy is for weak people. I don't need therapy. I just want to be left alone. You're making everything worse by being pushy and annoying. 
Jeffrey didn't even want to go to therapy. Believe me, I tried very hard to convince him. For the longest time, I believed that he was depressed. I was so used to seeing the sweet and responsible side of him that I believed all his lies. But slowly, I realised that Jeffrey was okay. He had no problem lounging around the house and playing games. He even went out with his friends every week. Meanwhile, I was working like a slave both at home and at work. I had no time for myself. Jeffrey even stopped giving me infection entirely. All he did was sit at home and complain. A few of my friends did warn me that Jeffrey was using me and becoming abusive. However, I refused to believe them. I still had full faith in the relationship. Somewhere in my mind, I thought that old Jeffrey was still there somewhere. Guys, I was wrong. I stayed for two whole years in this situation. It was a nightmare for me. One day I got fed up and said, Jeffrey, we can't go on like this. It's been two whole years. You need to either help around the house or get a job. I can't do this anymore. I've already told you multiple times that I'm not in the mental space to work. Why can't you just listen? You have been annoying me a lot. Jeffrey, I have been patient with you for two years. You won't even get help for your problems. How will our situation get better? Will it ever get better? We are pretty good right now. What is your freaking problem? You're just managing just fine without my help. I have zero savings. I don't have any time for myself. I have to work like a dog at the office and home. I can't do this anymore. If you don't get help, I will leave. Good then. Leave. You just said you don't have any savings. How will you pay for a lawyer? And if you divorce me, you will have to pay alimony. Plus, I'll get your house. Go ahead and divorce me. At that point, I knew that Jeffrey had trapped me. This was his plan all along. Trust me, guys. I never felt so scared and hopeless in my life. All my love for Jeffrey quickly turned into fear. But I was a strong-willed woman. I had no family, so I knew how to stand up for myself. So instead of cowering in fear and accepting my situation, I made a plan. I needed to get out, and I knew who would help me. The next day, I called Vivian from work. I poured my heart out to her. I knew that she was more reasonable than Jeffrey and would help me out. She raised him single-handedly and didn't take shit from anyone. She may not like me, but would understand my helplessness. As predicted, Vivian was furious, but not with me. She said, What the hell, Edith? This is unacceptable. I'm embarrassed by what my son has done. I've no idea how he turned into such a greedy and selfish person. I don't know what to do. You know, I don't have anyone living near me. Hell, I don't even have a family. You're the only one I can turn to. I am glad you trusted me enough to tell me. After what my son had done, I'm surprised you don't think badly of me. I have already given you enough reasons to hate me. Don't worry, Edith. I'm on your side. I will do something. Jeffrey has crossed his limits. Thank you so much, Vivian. You have no idea how relieved I am now. I felt so alone and stuck after Jeffrey made those threats. Vivian was always perfectly capable of handling Jeffrey. Believe it or not, he was actually pretty scared of her, even now. As I said, Vivian doesn't take shit from people and won't shy away from teaching Jeffrey a good lesson if necessary. Jeffrey had no idea what was coming for him. I had all my ducks in a row and was just waiting for Vivian to strike. Vivian did show up at our house around two weeks after I talked to her. When I came home from work, I saw her sitting in the living room with her luggage in tow. She looked at me and said, Come here, Edith. We were waiting for you. You must be surprised to see me here. Yes, it's a pleasant surprise, Vivian. What brings you here? Well, there has been some stuff going on, so I wanted to talk to both of you. What is it, Mum? Tell us immediately. Well, you see, I was thinking about buying a new house. My old house has become boring, and I don't want to live there anymore, so I was thinking about selling the house. But what will you do with the money? The house is expensive, and you will get a good deal out of it. I don't think you need that much money right now. You should do something about it. You are right, son. I don't need that much money, so I've made a decision. I'll give you the money, Geoffrey. I have enough to get a new place with my savings. You can have the sale proceeds as an early inheritance of sorts. Mum, are you serious? That is great news. I can't thank you enough, Mum. You've made the correct decision. Don't get so carried away, Geoffrey. I have one condition that you should agree to before I give you the money. I want you to divorce Edith. You know I never liked her, so I don't want her benefiting from your money. If you agree to divorce her, the money will be yours. If you don't divorce her, I will keep the money and do as I please. Wait, that's all you want? You want me to divorce Edith? Yes, I even brought papers with me. If you sign them, we can go for a mutual divorce. The entire process will be simple. I'll hand you the money once everything is finalised. 
Hearing this, Jeffrey had light bulbs shining in his head. He made no secret of the fact that the offer was pretty tempting for him. To be honest, I had no idea where Vivian was going with this. However, if he did divorce me, I would be free from being trapped with Jeffrey. So I kept a solemn face and said, Jeffrey, you can't possibly divorce me for money. Who even does that? Vivian, I know you don't like me, but offering him a bribe is going too far. Don't talk to my mum like this. You have been a neglectful wife and I hate being with you anyway. Since mum has gone through the trouble of getting everything ready, I won't disappoint her. I will sign the papers today. Seriously, Jeffrey? You would divorce me for your mother's money? Look, you have been wanting out of this marriage anyway, and I don't want to be with someone my mum doesn't like, so let's just make it easier for each other and get divorced. If that's your decision, I have nothing to say. However, I will only sign the papers if you agree to let go of alimony, and I won't be giving you a cent of my savings. Fine. I won't claim alimony or anything else. The alimony would be a shitty one anyway. I can get myself a better life with mum's money. I won't need your meagre savings and alimony. Okay then, Vivian, you have your wish. We will sign the divorce papers. Hearing this, Geoffrey quickly took a pen from the table and gave his signature. He also promised to meet with a lawyer the next day to draw up documents for a divorce settlement. Vivian said that she would help him get a good lawyer. Geoffrey looked very happy, went off into the master bedroom to call his friends. Meanwhile, Vivian sat there with a smile on her face. She walked up to me and said, So, my stupid son divorced you and accepted my little bribe. Hell, he didn't even take time to think. I had no idea how vile he had become. Let's make him regret this, Edith. So you did plan everything, didn't you? You're helping me get a divorce and leave Jeffrey. Yes, I did. I know that I have been hard on you. All this while I should have been more critical of my son. But don't worry, this time I won't slack off. Jeffrey will be taught a lesson. Hearing Vivian's words, I know I made the right decision to divorce him. If I had stopped Jeffrey from divorcing me, or stuck around any longer, he would have gotten even more abusive, but I wasn't going down so easily. While Vivian made him sign the divorce papers, I made him agree to a divorce settlement that would work in my favour. Geoffrey was so blind with greed that he didn't stop to think of my terms. I guess he believed Vivian's words? Anyway, Vivian moved in with me and Geoffrey because she was selling the house soon. She needed a place to stay till the old house got sold. She also told Jeffrey that she wanted to make sure I don't try to change his mind. Jeffrey gladly invited her to stay as long as she wanted. I moved out of the house once Jeffrey signed a document saying that he won't demand anything. I had a good lawyer who made sure everything was okay. I moved out into an apartment and tried to start my life afresh. Vivian and Jeffrey stayed at the old house until the divorce was finalized after six months. When the entire process was done, Vivian, Jeffrey and I met outside the courthouse. Jeffrey said, Finally, I am free from a witch wife like you. You were right, Mum. I should have left her a long time ago. I wish I had done this sooner. You threw away years of love for your greed. You should be ashamed of yourself. Don't be dramatic, Edith. Anyone would do this for good money. You will understand once I start living a better life than yours. Mum, since my divorce has been finalised, when will you transfer the money? I need to pay the lawyers and start living a new life. Well... You see, I changed my mind. I'm not giving you the money. I have other plans for it. What? Mum, what happened so suddenly? Why are you changing your mind? Probably because I got what I wanted and so did Edith. I'm well aware of the fact that you had been financially abusing Edith. She also gave me a detailed account of how you trapped her. If this wasn't bad enough, you readily divorced your wife for money. Do you think I would support you after this? But Mum, Mum, you're the one who said that I need to get a divorce. What is going on? Why are you taking Edith's side? You hate her! Well, no, I don't hate her. Right now, you are the one I hate. How could you do this to your wife, Geoffrey? Is this what I taught you? You are nothing but a shame to me. You will never get your hands on my money. I am your son, and you should support me, not Edith. I deserve the money after everything. You will give it to me. You deserve nothing! I have given half of the money to Edith so that she can get a good lawyer. The other half I spent to buy a house you live in right now. But you won't be welcome there. Here is an eviction notice for you. After your month is up, Edith will stay there and she won't need to pay rent. The look on Geoffrey's face was hilarious. Even though most people in my place would cry for the divorce, I was laughing my butt off. Finally, the true intentions of my mother-in-law were revealed and Geoffrey realised that we used his greed against him. 
he went pale, started to throw a tantrum right within the premises of the courthouse. Vivian and I got into a car and simply left the scene. We let security deal with him and his screaming insults. I went back to my rented apartment and even Vivian came to stay with me. Jeffrey was becoming unhinged so I didn't want her in the house as long as he was there. Jeffrey did try to call us both, however, we ignored his calls. He also sent us some colourful texts with threats and insults. We saved them just in case we needed a restraining order. Well, as the days passed, Jeffrey's madness didn't escalate. His stance changed completely. He was begging and pleading with me and Vivian. Honestly, it was hilarious. Gone were his threats and insults. Now, all he does is apologise and ask for help. Jeffrey had hired an expensive lawyer because Vivian promised to pay for one. That was a trap, so Jeffrey was stuck with a huge bill for his lawyers. His lawyer was getting restless and hinting at taking legal action against him. Jeffrey also had to beg people for help because neither I nor Vivian gave him any money. He did have a roof over his head, but he knew it wasn't for long. The eviction notice was hanging on his head and he simply couldn't afford to move out or get involved in another legal matter. He begged his friends for help, but they rejected him as well. I guess that did teach him a good lesson. His text soon became desperate and we didn't reply to him. Only one night, Vivian told him to get a job and get out. She also informed him that he was being disowned for his horrible behaviour towards me. For now, Vivian is staying with me while we prepare our permanent move to the house. Eventually, Vivian would buy a new place, but she told me that I could live there as long as I wanted.